Welcome back to Intro to Philosophy 1010. Our book is The World of Philosophy, an introductory reader by Stephen Kahn. In this video, we will be going over Virginia Held on the Ethic of Care. So this is from her article, The Ethic of Care, Personal, Political, and Global. This is from 2006, and this is following up on an original article she wrote about the ethic of care versus the ethic of justice, which she doesn't mention here. Usually when I teach this, it's I contrast the ethic of care to Kant, which would be the, the example the emblematic ethic of justice, which is concerned with universal rules, that you dis you abstract the universal rule from the particular situation to find the, the moral imperative, the categorical imperative. With the ethic of care, it's the exact opposite. You take in all the details of the interpersonal relationships that are involved to determine what is the right thing to do. But in this video, we will be contrasting, or not contrasting, uh, this will be for exam four, part A question two, what are the similarities and differences between the virtue, character, and care views of ethics in Aristotle, Giecke, and Held? So in the previous video, which got cut off short because I ran out of memory on the computer and I had to delete some other videos, but I got all the main points in there. We went over Aristotle and the Akan ethics of Ghana the main thing for them is you develop virtue through habit. The focus is on developing individual character. And you do that by habituating yourself to perform virtuous acts. Um, and it was almost identical for Aristotle and for the Akan ethics of Ghana. So how is that similar to and different than Virginia Held's ethic of care? Well, let me just first go over the ethic of care, and I really, really hope this video will not conk out on me, as has happened before, it's very frustrating. All right, the ethic of care on our book, in our book, page 349, well, let me just briefly read through a few of the points that she makes. On page 350, uh, she says, I think one can discern among various versions of the ethic of care a number of major features. First, the central focus of the ethics of care is on the compelling moral salience of attending to and meeting the needs of the particular others for whom we take responsibility. A little lower, the ethic of care recognizes that human beings are dependent for many years of their lives. A little lower, all persons need care for at least their early years. Many persons will become ill and dependent for some periods of their later lives, including frail old age, and some who are permanently disabled will not care uh, will need care for the whole of their lives. Morality is built on the image of the independent, autonomous, rational individual largely overlook the reality of human dependence and the morality for which it calls. So, um, I'm then second. In the epistemological process of trying to understand what morality would recommend and what, it would, what would be morally best for us to do and to be the, ethic of, the ethics of care, values emotion rather than rejects it. Not all emotion is valued, of course, uh, but in contrast with the dominant rationalist approaches, such emotions as sympathy, empathy, sensitivity, and responsiveness are seen as the kind of moral emotions that need to be cultivated. A little lower, but from the care perspective, moral inquiries that rely entirely on reason and rationalistic deductions or calculations are seen as deficient. So that, she was thinking of Immanuel Kant. Kant says you should have no emotional motive behind your good deed other than respect for the law, but we're, con we're not contrasting it to Kant. We're comparing this to Aristotle and uh, Kahn. So Aristotle says you must be in the proper emotional state of mind when you perform your action. That does matter. So there's a similarity, and Aristotle and the Akan are very similar. So what similarities... Virginia Held's ethics of care have with Aristotle it will also be similar to Akon, and so will the differences. I think the main difference I would point out between the two is that the ethic, the ethics of care focus on relationships more than each individual in the relationship, whereas Aristotle's and the Akon are focusing still on the individual autonomous person and how that person can become better. The ethics of care is trying to make relationships better. They, 
it, it wants you to become a better person, but you become a better person from this perspective by being able to engage in better relationships. The same is, goes for the virtue ethics of Aristotle and the Akan. Your actions most of the time will have to do with your interpersonal relationships, such as courage. Courage is a virtue that you develop by habitually acting courageously. So if you're in battle and you don't leave your other soldiers by running away like a coward, you stand your ground with them. Also, you don't leave the other soldiers and go forging ahead and leaving them behind and attack the enemy. That would be rash. We saw for Aristotle, the focus is on the, the intermediate between two extremes of vice. Virtue is the golden mean between excess and defect. Excessive courage is rashness and a deficiency of courage is cowardice. So they're very similar. Um, and again, I think one of the main differences is just the focus for the ethics of care is relationships, whereas with Aristotle and the Akan, it's still focused on the individual actor. But they both take emotions into account. They don't disregard them like the rationalistic Kant would say to do. So continuing here in the ethic of care, page 350, right-hand column, Third, the ethics of care rejects the view of the dominant moral theories that the more abstract the reasoning about a moral problem, the better, because the more likely to, to avoid bias and arbitrariness. It calls into question the univer universalistic and abstract rules of the dominant theories. A little on the left-hand column, page 351, the ethics of care may seek to limit the applicability of universal rules to certain domains where they are more appropriate, like the domain of law and resist their extension to other domains. Such rules may simply be inappropriate in, for instance, the contexts of family and friendship. Yet relations in these domains should certainly be evaluated, not merely described. Okay, so what a lot of people say about the ethic of care is you can't use that in, for example, the realm of law, where you do need to abstract from the individual people and apply universal principles equally to everybody, regardless of who they are. Justice is blind, the statue of justice, the lady with a blindfold, and she's holding the scales of justice. That's the ethic of, um, so it's the ethic of care versus the ethic of justice. The ethic of justice is what it was found out that boys more likely apply that ethic. Well, then how come, you know, the girls were scoring lower on this ethics test in Virginia held it said because they tend to apply the ethic of care. Now the ethic of justice she's admitting here might be more applicable in the public sphere of law where you are not supposed to be biased, but that wouldn't work in the family. You don't apply some universal principle in the family. You take each individual person's character into account, their relationships, their history, the more details you know, the better. And I think that makes sense. It would be cold and callous to apply some strict universal rule in the family, regardless of the circumstances. And similarly, it would be biased and corrupt to take play favorites or to adjust the rules in a legal court, depending on the relationships of people. It has to be taken into account to some degree, but at any rate, that is um, a big point. A lot of people who criticize the ethics of care say it, it's not applicable in the public sphere whereas it does seem to be more applicable than the ethic of justice within the family relationships. All right, so 351 left-hand column, dominant moral theories tend to interpret moral problems as if they were conflicts between egoistic individual interests on the one hand and universal moral principles on the other. The extremes of selfish individual and humanity are recognized, but what lies between these is often overlooked. The ethics of care, in contrast, focuses especially on the area between these extremes. All right, well, that clearly resembles Aristotle's claim that virtue is found by focusing on the intermediate mean between two extremes. The extremes are vice. For her, the extremes are egoistic individual interests and universal moral principles that apply to everybody. And so she's saying the ethic of care is between those. Those who conscientiously care for others are not seeking primarily to further their own individual interests. Their interests are intertwined with the persons they care for. Neither are they acting for the sake of all others or humanity in general. They seek instead to preserve or promote an actual human relation between themselves and particular others. Persons in caring relations are acting for self and other together. 
Their characteristic stance is neither egoistic nor altruistic. These are the options in a conflictual situation, but the well-being of a caring relation involves the cooperative well-being of those in the relation and the well-being of the relation itself. So there's another difference. Her focus is on the relationship itself. Aristotle and the Akon, they focus on the individual and how the individual should relate to others, but they don't focus on the relationship itself, and that is what the ethics of care does. Um, so the next section, she says, what is care? And she goes through various ways you could interpret what the word care means. Uh, but I'm going to skip that. And over the right-hand column, page 352, she says, caring practices should gradually transform children and others into human beings who are increasingly more admirable. So again, that is virtue ethics. She's concerned on making, in making people more admirable, more virtuous. But for her, a more admirable person is one who focuses on relationships. And that is very similar to virtue ethics, but there's these subtle differences again. She takes relationships as if they are individual entities separate from the people in the relationships in some sense, that the relationships between two people is more important than either individual. And I think you could read that into it a little bit. So continuing here on the right-hand column, this is the final paragraph. In addition to being a practice, care is also a value. Caring persons and caring attitudes should be valued, and we can organize many evaluations of how persons are interrelated around a constellation of moral considerations associated with care or its absence. For instance, we can ask of a relation whether it is trusting and mutually considerate or hostile and vindictive. We can ask if persons are attentive and responsive to each other's needs or indifferent and self-absorbed. Care is not the same as benevolence in my view, since it is more the characterization of a social relation than the description of an individual disposition. And social relations are not reducible to individual states. So that's what I was pointing out earlier. There seems to be a difference between Aristotle and the Akon on the one side and the ethics of care on the other. That and I'll read that again. Care is not the same as benevolence in my view, since it is more the characterization of a social relation than the description of an individual disposition, and social relations are not reducible to individual states. Caring relations ought to be cultivated between persons in their personal lives and between the members of caring societies. Such relations are often a reciprocal over time, if not at given times. The values of caring are especially exemplified in caring relations rather than in persons as individuals. So that was a pretty short and sweet version of and comparing that to Aristotle and Akon. There was actually one, I want to read this. This is from Kwame Gyeke's The Character and Akon Ethics, page 349 near the end. He says, the carrying out of a person's moral duty depends on character. The way to happiness, whether of the society or of the individual, depends ultimately on the characters of the individual members of the society. Whatever may be the origin of moral rules, whether man or a divine being, the important thing is to obey them insofar as these rules have been accepted and approved by society, and the state of a person's character is the crucial factor in obeying moral rules. The Akan thinkers, therefore, appear to be correct in attributing a pivotal place to character, Subban, and their thinking and morality. All right, so Aristotle and the Akan, they focus on how an individual person can develop virtue. So does the ethics of care according to Virginia held, but they put more emphasis on the actual relationships than any of the individuals in them. And there was another similarity with the way she said that she seeks the intermediate between in egoistic individuals on the one side and universal moral principles on the other. That's reminiscent of Aristotle's focus on the golden mean between two extremes of vice. Virtue is the golden mean between too much and too little of that virtue. All right, so this was, for exam four, question two. What are the similarities and differences between the virtue, character, and care views of ethics in Aristotle, Giecki, and Held? Which view is better argued why it explain? This also covers part B, question eight. What is an ethic of care? So again, an ethic of care is one that focuses on relationships between people it, and that's contrasted to the idea of ethics as regardless of the individual circumstances you need to reduce your moral 
idea to some universal maxim that applies in all situations, again, regardless of the individual relationships in involved, and that would be Immanuel Kant. So again, normally, the contrast of the ethic of care is to Kant's ethic of justice, but in this case, we were comparing it to Aristotle and the Akan.